Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Star Wars Generations Podcast. Today it's myself, Matthew Fox, and my co-host, Aaron McGowan, also known as Devastated Former Yord Hater, here to discuss the sexiness of Darth Biceps. I mean, here to discuss the sad <laughs> end of Yord and Jackie. I mean, here to discuss the Twin Switch movie. I mean, here to discuss the Acolyte Season 1, Episode 5. How are we feeling today? That's how I'm feeling. What, what, it's what wine. Nice, nice. It's wine drinking today. No, I'm feeling um, upset. I wasn't expecting this, to be completely honest with you. Um, yeah. yeah, I was not. Like, it was all fine and good. You know, I knew somebody had to die. They brought all those red shirt Jedi. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of thought Jackie was going to die when she took him on, like, one-on-one. -on -one, but then she died later, which had me all sorts of sad and then i was like okay we lost one named character like everyone else should be safe for the episode wrong mm -hmm. <laughs> like i think i think so much of my hate for yord has been turned to empathy and love just because of how hard the sith turned his neck yeah like that was just fucking brutal that that has to be one of the most hardcore deaths we've seen certainly yes. outside of an andor mandalorian type property and to me pretty mm -hmm. solidly put this in that world because like not only did we get what i think is some of the best lightsaber combat we've had and we'll talk about that we're also going to talk a lot about the characters and the plot of course but the moments when it just became a straight up fist fight and not like crazy martial arts mm -hmm. just like mm -hmm. two angry people punching each other and you know, yeah, Jackie being able to knock his helmet off, the Cortosis helmet, which we are going to talk about because Thrawn Girlies got such a positive thing with that. And I'm so happy about that. Yeah. But like, yeah. And then to just, I I don't think we've ever, we, well, we saw a Jedi be killed by the throwing of a knife. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we've ever really seen a Jedi die from anything except a, another lightsaber until this. Um, you know, where it was a knife and then about it. just the straight up hand to hand combat. Oh, it was so. <sighs> yeah. And it was it was something visceral. Yeah, it was a new level of emotion and combat within Star Wars, in my opinion. And so how do we feel about Jason from the good place being Darth Bicep? I think he fucking killed it. I could not be yeah. happier. I love Manny Jacinto. He just fucking killed this role. And yeah. I I saw them biceps and I was like, how the fuck did they hide this before? But then it's like when you watch back, my guy's wearing some heavy ass clothes before. He really is. He really so is. he hid that well, being that his face is still so slim. He like yeah. beat the rest of his body up like crazy. I'm assuming mostly for this role. So yeah. huge props to the actor. That's a insane amount of dedication i mean even during the good place he had pretty cut arms but this is like wrestler this is like you know kind of getting close to chris evans level not quite that mm -hmm. but like he's not just strong he is cut and yeah. it, like clearly when they were designing that shot that he is first revealed and everything about him someone said if this character doesn't break the record for most fanfics written about him as my new problematic fave in the first 48 hours, we haven't done our job because that opening <laughs> shot when his helmet is off and he's just killed Jackie and he's got this smoldering look on his face and his hair in front of his face. And it just like <sighs> the Sith are bad, but, but I'll, 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 you know, a lot of people, I think are like to be that person's acolyte right about them. Right. <laughs> the Sith are bad, but he's kind of, He's kind of bad, you know? Right, <laughs> like, right. Oh. Problematic fit. How many people out there went, I can fix him? I can fix him. Probably a lot. So, yeah, what do we think of his character, though? So, yeah. first of all, we were all right that uh, it's Kyber. Uh, Kyber was the Sith Lord. The, well, not, uh, we'll talk about if he's Sith or not, but he mm -hmm. is um, May's master, who has now revealed himself to be a badass lightsaber combat. And the 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 dark side master. Mm -hmm. What'd you think of like what we learned about him? I I mean I thought it was all very interesting. First of all, just if I can, a quick sentence on the delivery and the portrayal. Uh -huh. Holy shit, he's so fucking cold. 
Like, yeah. Jackie dies. Sol says, I don't fucking remember what he said. Oh, he said, like, Jackie, no, or something like that. Mm-hmm. And he goes, oh, was that its name? Yeah. Just so quiet, so monotone. This is one of my favorite parts of the episode. Sol said she was a child. He looked him in the eyes and said, you brought her here. Oh, my God. That not only did that hit hard. For He's that moment, right. But like, yeah. And like in my head, what I immediately thought of is every Jedi who gets their pet, who I immediately thought of every Jedi whose Padawan gets killed in the Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you brought them. And I first of all, you're right. The acting is just amazing. All of those lines, they could have been delivered maliciously, like, oh, is that his mm-hmm. name? But no, it's just like you said, it's a monotone. It's devoid of emotion in such mm-hmm. a powerful way. It's almost like a bizarre curiosity. Like there's just yeah. a hint of like Yeah. Wonderment amidst just this like rage. And I have to say I'm sorry Alex isn't here because I'm probably going to commit blasphemy in his mind. There were a lot of things about this that I couldn't help but compare to Revenge of the Sith. Mm -hmm. For one thing, the lightsaber scene. Mm -hmm. I always thought the scene where Palpatine just punks a couple of Jedi and then gets into a long fight with Mace Windu felt really weird. Here, I felt like every death was earned. And I felt like he was Mm -hmm. often on the back foot and just barely surviving. And using that incredible helmet and the wrist guards he has Mm -hmm. that we'll talk about in a minute. Like it felt like he wasn't in control. He was winning, but just barely. But then even more so when we hear his reasoning and there are people out there being like, Oh, so the Jedi are wrong. The Sith are right. That's not me in the slightest. Like the the Sith Mm -hmm. are still like, it's that in this, he's not just, I want ultimate power. I'm power hungry. He just wants the power to do whatever he wants. At any, he, he's kind of yeah. like the worst libertarian you've ever seen yeah. in that he wants to be able to express his power and he doesn't care the consequences of what happens to other people. Mm-hmm. And to me, that is much more in line with the ideas of the Sith that we got from so much of the extended universe and even some of the newer stuff than it, it you know, the, the whole, Wah-ha-ha, you know, ultimate power, unlimited power, whatever that idiotic line is. I found him a much more con- compelling character than I think mm-hmm. I found any other Seth except Vader. And, yeah. and the way that he is, you know, he's pointing out all the hypocrisy of the Jedi. And, and so much of it, I'm like, I hate where you go to instead, but you're completely right about what you're saying about the Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. He, um, I got a little quote from that kind of time period of the episode where Sol is kind of questioning him on why. And he said, you know, I want to use my power the way I can. The Jedi say I can't. He said, I don't make the rules. The Jedi do. And the Jedi say I can't exist. They see my face. They all die. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh like immediately, like top three favorite villains. Like he is, I mean, mm-hmm. we'll see once the honeymoon phase wears off. But like, I am all on board like the portrayal the fucking line delivery the optics of it all just yeah i'm really liking the 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 fact that he actually has a drive and a reason like you were saying it's not just power he's not i want to conquer the galaxy he's just i want to be me without being persecuted right which is a valid ask except for when you're killing people yeah Except you know? that, like, yeah, he is, I want <laughs> to like be me that I get to do whatever, you know, he basically just want, he wants to be the strongest survive, but he wants to be left alone. And like, when he does kill people, just no one bothers him about it. And yeah, it, it's very, yeah, it's that libertarian anarchist, but like where anarchy often has an idea of community about it, of like, we're coming together to do this communally. This is just a pure libertarian of like, you know, there's no rules whatsoever. And I'm, I'm, Obviously, there's an awful lot of libertarians who are not like this. I'm saying this is the the like the horrible extreme that some libertarians take it to. And even more so, I think the one of the lines for me that really got him was all his stuff about like when he says like rules, 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 and he's kind of making fun of them for having to follow the rules that he refuses mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. And 
there's a scene where Sol has the chance to kill him. And Jackie stops. No, I think it's Osha actually stops him with mm-hmm. the idea of the Jedi are not supposed to kill unarmed people. Mm-hmm. Obi-Wan Kenobi didn't kill Anakin when he could have twice because Anakin was unarmed and billions of people died. Yeah. And here, like, Saul could have ended all like every terrible thing that now happens because of uh, uh, every terrible thing that Kamir does now. I am in some level going to blame Saul for because he did let him survive. And but, like maybe he could have like, you know, I mean, can you blame Saul or can you blame Osha? Because Saul was going to do it. Right. In my opinion, I think her belief in him as a good person is the only thing that stopped him. I don't think anything in him was like. Yes, I should follow the Jedi code. Because mm-hmm. I think then what Chimera said about this is your master, like you still trust him after everything he did to you. Like right. that just hits even more where now I feel like Saul has been backed into an absolute corner of like, even though at that moment he still has the upper hand, technically he could still kill this Sith type master. Mm-hmm. But if he does, now he's completely revealed the depths of his depravity to Osha, which is something he's not willing to do. And he stopped this guy from killing however many more people he's going to kill. Like, exactly. I, no, your I, argument is better, but I think yeah. I, Osha no, I has you. a lot to do with it. I think Osha has a big part to do with it. I think Saul has a big... And I th- yeah, there's that sense of, like, for Saul, he has already broken the rules once. We don't know exactly how. But clearly bad things are happening. And so now it's this horrible situation where he's like, no, I won't break the rules again, even though this time, like, to be clear, it's not that I'm pro-death penalty at all. Like, if there was a way for Saul to have, like, you know, tied him up or put him in handcuffs or done. Mm -hmm. But I think the the idea was in that moment, you have, like, a three-second window before this guy is going to have his weapon back again. And you kill him or you don't. Yeah. And Absolutely. So let's talk about one of my absolute favorite lines was when Saul asks him, who are you? And he says, I have no name, but you folks, you, but the Jedi would call me, the Jedi might call me a Sith. Mm-hmm. What did you think that meant? Hmm. I mean, for a second part of me was like, no, don't be a Sith. But then I thought about the line further and I was like, cause I mean, they could, slice it a couple ways it could be like oh a jedi like you might call me a sith and therefore now the jedi call him a sith right and maybe that's then what he is um which is what i kind of didn't want out of this show so Mm -hmm. i'm hoping and it seems like they're setting it up for like you don't understand that there can be different factions and you don't understand that things are not black and white and the sith are not your only ops like they're not your only opposition um so yeah i think it's like it's literally a way of him dumbing it down like Mm -hmm. i mean and we saw yord's reaction to him osha said what was that yord said i don't know yord was so fucking scared he was so scared he was begging osha not to go back and when he died that shit broke me yeah i cried that's exactly what he didn't want like he knew you go back you die like he felt that dark presence in his mind and just like I went from like, Yord sucks. He's a goody two shoes to me being like, our sweet baby boy. (laughs) I think I I will say, and I want to get back to the Sith question, but I will say, I don't think Yord dying was the thing Yord was most afraid of. I think Osha dying was what he was most, I I think in his mind, he'd be like, like that last second of as long as Osha is running away, if I'm buying her two more seconds of Mm -hmm. getting away time by dying here, I'm okay with that. Like, I think he was scared of dying, but I think he was much more scared of not being able to protect Osha. I could see that. I could see that for sure. I feel like... And and I think we could have a large discussion about that, about is that because he cares about Osha, or is that because he's self-identified? He's kind of the sort of the martyr type. You know, he his uh entire self-worth is, I am here to sacrifice myself for others, to do all I can for others, but they have to do it exactly my way. You know, and all that. Um, yes. Oh, I, I was pausing to let you respond. Oh, yeah. No, Um, I think that's very true. I think 
I don't know. I think Yord is a much more complicated character than I've given him credit for. Yeah. Um, And that really has come out in this last episode. So I'm excited. I already watched it twice like I typically do. But I'm excited to come back in a couple months, watch it again, and see if I can identify more with his motivations. Because I think, yes, he was very scared of Osha dying. But I think part of him was very scared that no one would survive and nobody could tell anybody what happened. Mm -hmm. I think he might be the type to do that type of forward thinking of like this power is so dark and we can't understand it. We can't fight it and something needs to happen about it. Um, Yeah. That's That's kind of something that I read from it of of, on top of he was you're right. He was very desperate to get OSHA to the SIP, you know, civilian to safety. He was very on top of that because I think, like you said, a lot of him sees himself as a martyr. Also, so much of him sees himself as the dutiful upright Jedi. Yeah. And he was given an order by Master Saul, citizen sh- or c- civilian to the ship. And yeah. Right. Uh, and it makes sense that especially at this time when these things are happening that he doesn't understand, he's going to grip all the tighter like to the rules that he most believes. You mm-hmm. know, in some ways I kind of wish we'd seen more of Keimer and Yord because I think Yord especially, Keimer would have had so much fun with of just picking apart, like because he's that kind of like very strong but very brittle, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if I can get back to the Sith question, I, I yes. think I have a take kind of similar to yours, but a little different. And I, I've said this, I said this a lot on an episode we just put up, and this kind of I think um, reinforces it, especially that line of "You would call me Sith," but I won't repeat it in great detail. I'll just kind of give the, the summary. Think about the word Nazi. And what does it mean to us today? Because the word can mean the actual people from 1930s and 40s Germany who did all sorts of horrible, horrible things. It can mean the neo-Nazis, the people who. It can mean neo-Nazis, the people who like still believe in, you know, mustache man and his ideology and all the hateful, anti-Semitic, racist, militaristic, like all that awful junk today, white supremacy and all that. Mm -hmm. Or it can mean groups that do not in any way admire Hitler, do not in any way have a connection in terms of their fundamental ideology with the Nazis, but do things that are very authoritarian, very, you know, awful, and feel a lot like Nazism, like ethnic cleansing. Um, We talked about, you know, Nazi, them being Nazis a lot when we talked about was all the ethnic cleansing that was happening in Bosnia and uh, um, Croatia and all those places. Um, Today, we often talk about, you know, different political leaders who are, you know, supporting concentration camps for immigrants or stuff like that. Um, People might call them Nazis. My point just being that we're only 80 years away from the Nazis themselves, and we still have neo-Nazis, and the term has come to mean a much wider thing than Mm -hmm. just these specific people. This show is happening 700 years after anyone's ever seen a Sith. Mm -hmm. And so I could easily see it that like the term Sith has just kind of shifted in the lexicon over, you know, let history becomes legend, legend becomes myth to mean people who use the dark side and have red lightsabers and Mm -hmm. are really powerful about it. And, and that's kind of what, when I, what I sort of think, and this is, I think really tying into what you were saying about how he's kind of making fun of them and dumbing it down for them. He's kind of saying like, you idiots think that anybody who has a red lightsaber is a Sith. So go ahead yeah. and call me a Sith. Whatever. Exactly. It's like you can't comprehend the gravity of what I'm trying to do. <laughs> like, right. Um, can we talk about Jackie a little bit? Yeah, that one was rough. Jesus. Just, I can't. I, Because, I mean, first of all, she was scrapping with me. That was hand to hand, just motherfuckers mm-hmm. punching each other. I was all about that. I was like, "Let's go," you know. Get some. So I, I have a question here, here, and this is more about May, but we'll get back to Jackie in a second. Mm-hmm. At the end of the last episode, May had said that her goal was to find um, the Wookiee Jedi and surrender herself. Yeah. Now a Jedi is trying to arrest her. Why doesn't she just surrender herself? The way she, what changed for her? What changed is that the master is there. Mm. 
because when she said she was going to turn herself in, she said that to Keimer, her clumsy friend. Right. She didn't know. And then when she gets there, Kalnaka's dead. She realizes exactly what Kaimir said to her. The last thing he said, he'll kill you. So it doesn't matter if the Jedi get her. The Jedi are out there getting slaughtered. If they arrest her, she's dead too. I think that's kind yeah. of what we saw presented to us over and over again in this episode is just how cowardly she is. Like, May will run from any fight. Like, she doesn't give a shit. She doesn't care that people have just saved her life. She's not going to hop in and help out. She's still running. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that makes sense, especially because because I, I went back and watched episode four as well, and you're right. I think it's her idea there is I'm going to go to the Jedi. The Jedi are going to take me back to Coruscant or wherever. Like I'm going to be surrounded by Jedi, and then I'll be safe mm -hmm. when the Master comes after me. Yeah. But here she's like, the, the number of Jedi who can protect me right here, right now is dwindling very quickly. If I just say, hey, Jackie, you're my buddy now. Uh, I surrender to you. He'll just kill Jackie and then kill me. I just got to mm -hmm. book it out of here. I think that yeah. makes a lot of sense. But yeah, back to Jackie herself. Um, I really hope we see that actress in more things because I thought her acting was amazing. I thought her physicality. Um, mm -hmm. There may have been stunt doubles, but a lot of that combat I think was done by herself and was just so... At times it was just like beautiful and at times it was brutal and it did both. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like... The scene in which she knocks the helmet off of Kymer, uh, Kyber. I don't know if you call him Ky uh, No, it is Kymer. I think it's Kymer. Kymer. Yeah, or Kymer. Yeah, Kymer. Um, like, she was in that full-on, like, Luke Skywalker after Darth talks about his sister, you know? Like, just mm -hmm. like, and and she she came close to getting him until he pulled the second lightsaber, and, you know, she kind of walked right into it. And it was horrible and terrible, but it was also a great death for her, you know? And, like... yeah. I kind of hate that we keep getting really good uh, characters introduced and then killed in the same st show. But I kind I of think like the brutality of both of them dying. And then the second time I watched, I could clearly see that it was a stun gun that hit Yord. But the first time I couldn't tell that. And it was literally that he says, I'll explain it. And then he gets shot. And I was just like, no, I know God I thought, for a minute. I thought all three were dead. All three meeting May, Osha, and Sol? Uh, no, uh, May, May uh, your Jackie and Sol. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be honest. I thought Sol was dead from step one. Like when yeah. they did their face off and Yord hopped out, I was like, Sol is so dead. Like this, oh, the, he's dead. From the minute last episode where he said, I'll explain yeah. it when we get back. I was like, Sol those so are the dead. next word. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but yeah, I was actually very impressed with how Soul did in that one-to-one -one combat. Mm -hmm. And it was also interesting because, like you kind of said, Kymer was kind of toying with him, you know? Yeah. Like, he's there to get May. He doesn't really need to fight Soul if he yeah. doesn't want to. And eventually, he does just literally dip and go find May in the middle of their altercation. Because he doesn't care about that. He's just there to, like, prove how strong he is and the depth of his power and makes Saul feel like shit. Because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Saul probably should feel like shit. We don't know what he did yet. Um, real quick, I wanted to pull up something Alex said about this episode. Go for it. He texted me this morning and said, I mean, I know we were promised a dark show, but Jesus, fuck. The body count is absurd. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Um, he also, oh, this was kind of fucked up. I'm exposing him. So we were talking about everyone's death, and he was like, oh, the next tap was crazy. He said Jackie got three hole punched. Oh, no. It's just a really fucked up thing to say. It's so wrong, but it's so true. Like, it just, it gives me a little giggle in the midst of all this sad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, like, think about, like, when Qui Gon dies, it's very, like, it's, of course it's bloodless because the lightsabers cauterize the wound, but like, we, never, we just see the lightsaber go in and get pulled out. And compare that to seeing, like, the three, like, smoking holes in, in Jackie's back and the back of her outfit mm -hmm. and then her falling over. It was just – and it was so quick, you know? Just, like, zap, zap, zap. Yeah. It was absolutely brutal. I will say, real quick, about that actress, Daphne Keene. She was in mm -hmm. Logan. 
she plays the little girl in Logan. Oh, she was X-13. Yes. So she's a really great actress. She's done the action shit before. There's a good chance she did a lot of her stunts. Yeah. Um, But yeah, that was, oh God, that was hard to watch, especially because, I mean, I'm an Ahsoka stan, so I'm always going to see this and say this, but (laughs) when she lit Kalnaka's lightsaber, all I saw was Ahsoka Tano in seasons three through five of the Clone Wars. That's all I could see. And she was doing like spin moves and like just doing these blocking like uh, maneuvers that were just so familiar to Ahsoka. Yeah. And it just made me even more scared because I thought she was going to die in that first encounter when she was using Kalnaka's mm. lightsaber. But once again, once Kalnaka's lightsaber was severed, Kymer fucked off because he just wanted to get May. Yeah. And so it's it sucks to see that his agenda was to get May, yet he truly gives not a single care about killing all these other people, not just killing them to get past them, but in these like brutal ways. Oh yeah. And like just... stabbing one Jedi and then using the force to pull another one onto the, like the Shishka Jedi of the, the lightsaber there. Like, Oh, and then decapitating them both. I showed that clip to my coworker this morning. I was like, this is kind of fucked up, but it's really cool. He was like, Whoa. <laughs> and I think one of the most brilliant, like cinema, I don't know if this is cinematographer or like director of photography or what, but, or the, just the straight up director shooting it all from OSHA's perspective through the trees was so brilliant because we weren't seeing it close up. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot had to be left to the imagination, but like we could see him kind of like knocking people out and like, you know, ha- and like the first one he kills or he like knocks a, uh, knocks, I think it's a Corrin. He knocks the, them to the ground and stabs them. It's, um, it's not a Corrin. It's the species that Plo Koon is, but I don't know the name off the top of my head. You're right. Yeah, corns are a little different. Um, It's one of the aquatic ones. But yeah, it was just, we couldn't really see what was going on. And to me, that again, made it so much more effective. And then, can we talk about cortosis um, and and the headbutts and just how amazing that was? What's cortosis? Okay, so. Is that the material that basically kills lightsabers? Yes. And Okay, that was sick. That was sick. Right. And do you remember, or you and I have talked about it recently? Not recently, but like a year ago, I think, by now. No. So, Cortosis is something that comes originally from the Extended Universe novels, but is actually referenced in Thrawn Alliances, which you and I did coverage of, I think, like a year ago or so. It is a very unstable metal that can explode quite easily, but if it is very carefully refined... It and they go into some techno babble about metallurgy that I did not understand at all and did not hold mm-hmm. on to. But the basic idea of it is that it can short out electrical fields and cause them to like you know come like a, a miniature EMP kind of a thing. Um, and so when it comes into like a power source comes into contact with it, the power source is shorted out. And yeah. one of the things it can short out is lightsabers. And mm-hmm. in Thrawn alliances. Basically, Anakin, um, Anakin and Thrawn meet up because they're going to a planet where where the Separatists are trying to refine Cortosis, and it's this terrible weapon that could be used against the Jedi because it's great, basically anti lightsaber shields. Yeah, and so and like granted, they did not say the word Cortosis, so maybe it's something else. But mm-hmm. we know that the writer of the Acolyte is a huge EU. Legends fan, and she wants to yep. bring more of that into the Disney canon. And though, though, again, this stuff is already in the Disney canon, not just in Thrawn. I think one of the uh, early books also from the Disney canon it's mentioned in. But yeah, it's it's basically like the material that I think his helmet and his wrist bracers are made of that he can basically just like headbutt a lightsaber, and the lightsaber will short out for like five seconds. And <sighs> yeah, you see him like block things with his head, like literally headbutt the lightsaber a couple times. And and block stuff, and it's just mm-hmm. so well done. Ask Can you hear um, Jimmy Buffett in the background? Because my parents are cranking it up there. I love me some Jimmy Buffett. If it was playing and I could hear it, I would be like having to fight singing it along. So I promise you, okay. I can't hear it. Awesome. <laughs> um. <clears throat> yeah, that's super cool. I thank you for the fill in on the lore. Um. Mm-hmm. And you do it for me all the time, so I'm glad I could have it just once from this side. 
Look at that. I love it. The turntables. There you go. Um, but yeah, no, it's super interesting. I picked up on that right away because we watched it through and I could see, you know, the, at first you assume, oh, he broke the lightsaber. He cut it or something. But then they flicked back on and I was like, what the hell? Right. <laughs> um, and then the episode ended. I was watching it with my parents. My dad was like, how do so many lightsabers get cut and happen? No one's hands get cut. And I was like, no, like he's not cutting them. And then I was like thinking back and I was like, no, it has to be. It's his helmet. It has to be. And like these guards, gauntlets he's wearing, something like that. Um, so that's so interesting. I love the way that just extended universe is getting brought in so subtly mm -hmm. into our um, cinematic universe. So, yeah, that's a really cool addition. And it made him so much scarier and so yeah. much more formidable against the Jedi because, first of all, they're not used to actually having to fight people with lightsabers in combat. Right. Jedi don't fight other Jedi. They're not used to fighting for their life lightsaber to lightsaber. Second of all, if nobody else has lightsabers, how would anyone know how to turn them off? Yeah. So, like, that's just, like, a double whammy of, like, you didn't even know that dark side users were a thing. And now he's fighting you with a lightsaber. And now also he's turning your lightsabers off. You're fucked. Like... Yeah. And I think that's how most of the Jedi who died within the first 10 minutes of the episode felt. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's they I, were. Um, you could tell that he was being incredibly strategic about it. He would, mm -hmm. like, when there were two people attacking him, he would short out the lightsaber on one side and then try to deliver a kill blow to the other one while he could just isolate them in one-on-one -on -one combat. Like, yeah. again, it just compared to the, like, bouncing flying Palpatine who just stabs three Jedi in 10 seconds, this felt like such a more... I felt much more believable in terms of like, yeah. this is what a truly dominant combat master, but still like he's fighting six Jedi. Of course, he's going to mm -hmm. be on the back foot. He's going to just scrape by by the skin of his teeth, but he's going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, shall we talk a bit about Osha and May? Yeah. Let's talk about the twins. So I'm back on fuck May. First of all, mm -hmm. like what the hell man? Um, it was it was interesting. The reunion between the two of them did not play out the way I thought it would. It was mm. it felt uncomfortable. Yeah. I don't know if you had that. Alex texted said he thought it was just bad acting, which could go into it. I think it's probably really hard to do an emotional scene with a green screen version of yourself. You know, you have yeah. to be doing all of this to a body double. Uh -huh. Um and then you're not really performing the scene back and forth as it should be. You're performing one half and then the other half. Yeah. I know Amanda Stenberg is an incredible actress or actor. I don't have any doubts that she could kill something like that, but I wonder if that went into how awkward it felt. But also these are two twins who haven't seen each other in 16 fucking years. Yep. May absolutely loves Osha. Osha believes that May is a murderer and killed her entire family. It's going to be fucking awkward. Yeah. So. Yeah, to me, it didn't it didn't come across as bad acting. I did, I did agree that, like, it didn't really have, like, I didn't feel like that they had a chemistry because it wasn't, you know, like mm -hmm. I said, it wasn't two actors playing off of each other. And I think for any actor, that would be very hard. But I think mm -hmm. uh, she did one of the best jobs you could with it. Totally. I mean, of the other but, things I've seen. But yeah, yeah. But also, I think that, yeah, other people have done this much worse. But also just the sense of first how unbalanced both of them are. Mm -hmm. May has just like learned that this bumbling fool who she thought was her friend is her master, that her plan to survive her mat to escape her master has completely gone up in smoke. And she's either going to be dead or she's going to be back to being like his acolyte and not being treated very well. Um, and her sister's alive. And yeah, she has that moment of, oh, my God, my sister's a lot oh, my sister doesn't realize that she's brainwashed. At least this is from May's perspective. Yeah. And yeah, so I think, to me, it didn't feel awkward. I can see how it would come off that way. But to me, it just felt like two characters who were both like really lost in the sauce. I'm like, not sure what was happening. Um, that makes a lot and, of sense. Um, and and, and I, to me, I think like next episode, maybe the one after it, but I think pretty clearly next episode, we got this flashback from osha's perspective i think we're going to get this kind of rashomon thing of the same flashback but now from may's perspective and we're going to see like what may saw happen 
the night the Jedi came to their home and and took Osha away. Because mm-hmm. even when she is like, she's broken with the master, she's trying to get away from the master. So there isn't a sense of she has to spout the party line. She is still very anti the Jedi. She says the Jedi deserved everything. Like it, it, it feels to me like she is still like happy on the dark side of things. Yeah. What is driving her is her anger and her vengeance against the Jedi. She just doesn't think her master is like helping her in that anymore. Yeah, exactly. She just doesn't see that as the correct way to get through it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's just for me, it's like. Yeah, like you said, everyone is really imbalanced. But also, like, May, my girl, you told her she was brainwashed, and then you didn't do any other explanations or arguments. You were mm-hmm. just like, oh, screw you. You're going to yeah. try to arrest me because, like I just said to you, you've been brainwashed. Therefore, I'm going to knock you out and leave you to probably die at the hands of my master who wants to kill me. Like, it just I seemed mean- like a very cold turn. I mean, I'm going to defend her for a bit because she then does okay. do the um, she does do the twin switch, you know, where she like cuts her hair and and switches clothing with her, which it's a little bit of a trope. But I thought it, we'd get it at some point this season. I think it was fine where it came. And I, I need to rewatch it to really understand what she was doing there. But it definitely seemed like she was trying to, to some extent, like take attention away from OSHA. By being OSHA, you know, but also she was learning a lot. I didn't see it that way at all. Mm. What did I can, you see? I that- hear you. Um, but yeah, to me, I saw it as her OSHA thoughts didn't pan out the way she wanted it to. OSHA did not drop everything to go back to being their happy little family. So she's back on this mission of kill those four Jedi and there's one Jedi left. And mm. the best way to get close to him is to be OSHA. That's fair. And the best way to survive your master is to get on Soul's ship because you don't know if there's any other ships on this planet other than the one you came on with your master. Yeah, I see it very fair. much. Fair. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. I see it as like a survival tactic. I, um, yeah. This thing that Osha said to her, even though Osha doesn't have all the information, she said everything you've ever done was her yourself. And I yeah. think a good portion of that is true for me. Um, obviously not everything that Osha thinks it is. but I mean, we may get this really weird situation where Soul confesses to May. Oh, sorry. Soul confesses to what he thinks is Osha, mm-hmm. everything that really happened. Mm-hmm. And May can argue back against him. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, the real Osha still doesn't hear any of it. Okay, but, but here's the thing let's talk about Osha's future. Chimer found her. He still needs an acolyte. He knows she's a yeah. twin of his other acolyte. He does some weird ass monologue about destiny and suffering or something like that. It wasn't weird. It was kind of cool, but I just don't remember anything mm-hmm. from it. Um, and now the way I see it, he's going to tell Osha May's side of the story and use it to pull her to the dark side. Yeah. I can I, see that happening genuinely. I think it's very possible because we, we haven't heard, uh, we just got a, li- a listener comment that I'll respond to in a second. We haven't heard like, we we know the show was called The Acolyte, and we've all been feeling like May was that, and it sounded like May was an acolyte, but he says like halfway through this episode, like that's what he's looking for. And he doesn't he doesn't know if May is gonna be that or not. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, I think the idea that Osha could be the one who when she realizes all the ways that the Jedi have lied to her, presumably that's what's happening, that she's the one who turns like that. Yeah. Um I mean, I hope not because I just love Osha, but. Mm -hmm. We got a comment from Emil who writes, there's confusion in Saul in this chapter. He has seen more devoted to the dark. He has seen more devoted. Let me start that again. There's confusion in Saul. In this chapter, he has seen more devoted to the dark force with so much anger, wanting more to kill than to defend life. Yeah. I think there's some truth to that. I think there's some truth to that. And. I think the Sith are wrong. I think the Jedi are also wrong in a lot of ways, but I think the Sith are a lot more wrong. But I think... I think there are times when dipping your toe into the dark side is not the worst thing in the world. I think there are times when Kanan's attachment to Hera 
and to Ezra and to his family, and, and Ezra even more so, drives him to act out of anger and touch the dark side, and it works. I think mm-hmm. Luke flirts with the dark side when he goes into angry mode and about wanting to protect his sister and wanting to kill Darth Vader because he doesn't want his sister harmed. And it's good that he pulls back and, and is able to defeat Darth Vader without killing him, which I think is the difference. That's not what Sol did to uh, uh, Kyber, Kyber. But Luke pulls back. But like mm-hmm. I, I think there's some dark side to what Luke does there. And it, it's... Like, I would love to live in a world, it, it, this is a whole other tangent that I've gotten into somewhat on the Superhero Ethics podcast, and I'll keep this very short, but to me, there's a huge difference between the words, I will not kill, and I will not take a, uh, an unnecessary life, or I will not murder, mm-hmm. because killing is, to me, saying I'm going to try hard not to save lives, but in the course of fighting people who are trying to take lives, I may wind up taking actions that end their life. And I don't want to do that. But if I'm forced to, I'm willing to do that if it protects lives. And I think that's a very dangerous road to go down. But I also think if, if, if just a slippery slope is what makes you have kind of a Batman idea of I won't kill, or uh, in this case, I won't kill an unarmed person. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like, Darth Vader is defeated. There's no chance that Darth Vader is going to continue to be a threat. And so that's why Luke doesn't deliver the killing blow. Yeah. I, I think, I think Amelia, you're very right. I think Saul is, you know, getting into the dark side here. And I think his attachment to Osha is a big part of that. And, and that's like, I think Yoda is going to hear about this and be like, Hmm, maybe we shouldn't have let Saul get so attached to begin with. Maybe if we're stricter about like, I can totally see that happening. Let's but stop giving Saul Padawans. Yeah. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> maybe so. Um, Something that, that uh, Danielle has written in the Star Wars pointed out uh, in the episode we did yesterday is that there's such a marked difference between how Saul treats um, Osha versus how Saul treats Jackie. And mm-hmm. that may be because just Jack, he recognizes Jackie needs a different kind of care. But I think it's possible that he realizes he became too attached to Osha, and so he's trying not to become attached to Jackie in the same way. Mm-hmm. And I think Jackie is really good about the boundaries herself. You know, she's the yeah. one in the first episode who kept saying, "Do I have permission to speak freely?" Like yeah. she is definitely in a. If the range is Yord and Osha, she's kind of on the Yord side a little bit yeah. more of rule following. Um, but I want to say on Soul with the Dark Side, um, I think for the first half of the episode, he was really in like survival mode. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there was much rage, but there was a shit ton of fear. Mm-hmm. A whole lot of fear. Which, say it together, fear leads, leads to, to anger. Side. Anger yeah. leads to hate. Hate leads to the dark Suffering. Suffering Dark Side. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that line was crossed when Jackie died, when Jackie was killed. Mm. Like yeah. after that is when he gets in a literal, just bloody fist fight with this Sith type person. Like mm-hmm. I think the rage Jackie and then seeing what happened to Yord, how quickly it happened, how mercilessly it was delivered. I think just really built that anger and rage in him that, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, that he really, was dipped into the dark side in that moment. You know, mm-hmm. Jedi don't attack people who are unarmed. Jedi also don't attack people without arms. Jedi don't fight people. They don't fist fight people. You know, that's mm-hmm. just not a thing they do. Um, unless, as we see here, they're really fucking pushed. Or it's Anakin Skywalker and Padme's getting flirted with. Like, compare that fight, just the raw punching each other, to the martial arts fight that Carrie Ann Moss's character, whose name I always forget, um Indara. Indara, thank you. You know, she's doing this like elegant martial arts deflect the attack and almost never actually hitting May. And that's so different from just yeah, th- this is not martial arts combat, this is a street brawl. Mhm. Totally. Yeah. So yeah, I think um there's one last point I'm going to make and a, a creator uh friend of mine made this 
and I'll try to link to his original to the TikTok that he said this in to give him credit. But I think I, I think I really liked this episode. I understand why some people didn't. I think it would have worked much better. I, I know I like to binge everything, but I'm not saying if everything should be binged. But I think if episode four and five were combined into one long episode. Because mm-hmm. I think if you basically, I think like episode two, that was the time to start having suspicion of like, oh, you know what? Maybe Keimer is the is is the dark side guy. Mm-hmm. Episode four, it's pretty much like it's pretty much shown to you. And so mm-hmm. I think if my episode four were like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's him. And then 20 minutes later, we see that it is him. It's a cool, I figured it out moment. Mm-hmm. But instead, we had to wait a week. And in that week, it went from, a, oh, cool, we figured it out to, oh, we figured this out a week ago. This is so obvious. This is bad writing. Yeah, like I, I already knew think, it. Yeah. And I don't, I, I think that's like too much nitpicking to like find something wrong. Mm-hmm. But I do get it. And I think it would have been, a, I think a lot of the things in episode four get paid off so well in episode five that it would have just been better to have these two at least as one long episode. Yeah, I could see that argument. That makes sense. Um, what were you just saying that I was thinking about? Um, yeah, oh, I was going to say, yeah, so you said episode two is when we're supposed to start getting suspicious of Chimere. I agree, mm-hmm. because when I was re-watching the episodes after I watched episode four, before I watched episode five, because my parents started watching it with me, um, after he turns May into the Jedi and he's like, oh, she's coming back tonight. And the Jedi confront her and she escapes. The next morning we see him sneaking out of the apothecary and she comes at him with a knife and mm-hmm. he disarmed her so fast. Yeah. And got yeah, he did. both of them hidden behind that building so fast. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. like looking back at it, obviously hindsight is twenty twenty, but it's like that makes no sense for the character he was portraying. Like that was a slip yeah. in the facade. That's something... That May should have noticed, you know, when she sees that it's him, he said, you really didn't know it was me? Not even deep yeah. down? Like, yeah. he thinks she's a fucking idiot. She should have yeah. known. She really should have, especially when he lets things slip like that. In episode four, I need to rewatch what I saw online. We actually see him put a lightsaber into his backpack. Yeah. Like, he's not that subtle, you know? He's mm-hmm. sneaky, but he's not that subtle. Yeah. He's doing his best Yoda impersonation for a little while. I'm like, oh, do you really have to do this? Do you have to fight? Are you a great warrior? Um, yeah. But yeah, I think you could have seen it. Yeah. Well, this has been a great discussion. Um, we're going to follow up a little bit more in the bonus section. Uh, but uh, Aaron, do you have any last things you want to say? Yeah, a few last comments. Um, first of all, I, I am kind of falling in love with this Sith guy because <laughs> when Sol goes, why risk discovery? And he goes, well... I did wear a mask. I burst out laughing at that point. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> I was like, this guy is just so witty. He's so no bullshit. It's just so funny. He's, well, you brought her here. Well, I, I wore a mask. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know? Um, and then the final thing I had noted from this episode, which I forgot Alex wasn't with us this week. Um, what's up with this red orange dust left by his force power? Oh, I'm not sure. I don't know. Like, do you know what I'm talking about? Did you notice that too? Like when Osha wakes up, there is a path of orange dust that wasn't there before spreading out in the way that his force pushed oh, into that. that. I, I thought that was just kind of like the clay under the like first level of dirt. Oh, okay. Maybe it is. That could probably be it. But yeah, I was super confused because we saw it in a couple different places. And I was like, does this have to do with the way he uses the force or... It yeah, could just I, be a planetary thing, too. Yeah. I mean, if you remember, um, the planet they go to at the end of The Last Jedi, the salt planet, like the ground is kind of reddish underneath that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the thing is, I just didn't remember why the ground was red in that movie. I just remembered seeing things about it. And I was like, mm. that's why I was hoping Alex was going to be here, because I was going to be like, does that have to do with the sequels? Because I don't know that much about those movies, but <laughs> it doesn't. Fair. And that's you filled fair. in the blanks, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, Emil had one last comment, so we'll just end with that. Uh, Emil writes, for the next episode, I think Saul will tell his version to Mo. Uh, 
For the next episode, I think Saul will tell his version to May, while Keimer will tell Osha exactly what happened with that massacre 16 years ago. Remember that Kyber wants to take Osha to the dark side. Yeah, I think, especially if they do a good storytelling way of it, of like kind of cutting back and forth mm -hmm. of Osha, you know, of, like you said, Saul, uh, Saul talking to May, thinking it's Osha, Keimer mm -hmm. talking to Osha. I, I hope he's going to figure it out a lot faster. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that I think that'd be a really great way to, to learn more about all that. Yeah, I, I mean, I hope it goes that way. That's that's perfect. That's exactly yeah. what I want. Because, um, yeah, that is the best and fastest way to get Osha kind of towing towards the dark side. Yeah. So we'll see. Anyway, thank you all so much. Um, members, stick around. We'll have some more bonus content for you. Um, if you want to become a member, it's very easy to do. Only $5 a month. All the information in the show notes or $55 a year. You get bonus content. You get ad-free content. You get bonus episodes. We've been doing a book club recently, but we're going to do some other stuff as well. Uh, the book club episode should be coming out next week. Uh, and also, most importantly, you get to help support the podcast. Um, we're trying to currently update our sound equipment so we can make even better content for you all. I know we've had some rocky episodes, which I'm very sorry for. But my hope is that all that's going to get taken care of and we're going to be able to take care of you guys. So thank you all so much. Uh, Emil uh, said thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, please always feel free to hop on YouTube when we're recording. You can go to the Ethical Panda Podcasts on YouTube and subscribe, and then that'll tell you. We pretty much always do this Thursday at 5.30 p.m. I'm oh, sorry, Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. for Star Wars, and then Thursday at noon, uh, noon p.m., all, both of the times Central Time for Superhero Ethics. It moves around a little bit. I'm going to try to get that schedule out to people more often. Uh, and, of course, give us feedback. Uh, it's been great to have the feedback live in the chat. Send us emails. Send us Facebook messages. Send us Discord. Send us carrier pigeons. Whatever you want to do, uh, get us a message. We'll read it on the air and talk about it. So on behalf of myself and Aaron, thank you all so much. We have spoken. Stay classy. Kofar. You Don't Kofar. Choose... <laughs> <laughs> Don't choose them again. Please choose.